Why did I? Why? I guess it's, we've it's started now. It's, yes, we have started now. Oh. Everything is your fault. Because you let me get away with it. No, I don't. I, I keep oh, you accountable, and you know that. See? Fuck. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome. To episode, I don't know. Six. No. Unless we decide to make this five, Who which knows? we might. But you know what? Welcome you to... You don't need to worry about that. <laughs> Honey, you, you should, should read, read this. this. All right, I'll stop. Man, it's been a while since we've done one of these. I know. I feel a little rusty. That's what happens when you batch produce things and you just kind of forget how to do it. But we'll jump back into it. We are. We will. Logically. Cheers. Uh, my coffee's down there. Are we having a coffee break now? <laughs> <laughs> sure. I'm not supposed to drink on camera because it's loud. It's hella loud. Okay. Cheers. <laughs> Oh, that's hot. Yeah, I know. It's hot. Today, it's not the only hot thing on camera. Also, but mainly. You are coffee. hyped tonight. It's Christmas. Yes, it's true. We're on vacation. It's Christmas. Yeah, and I'm on vacation. Yeah. Finally. All right, so how do we do this, babe? What do we do? Who are to, we? Shh. Sorry. Tonight's episode is a little bit different for two reasons. Number one, it is a book I have read before because number two, it's Joel's book. He is an author, like we've mentioned, and I am his editor. So I actually have read this and it's very good. And we're going to discuss it so that maybe y'all get hyped to read it too. You should read it, honey. But yeah, with that intro, this is even weirder than usual, because, I mean, how am I supposed to talk about how great a book is that I wrote? That's either... Toot toot! Yeah, it's either <laughs> wildly uh, incorrect, or just a little egotistical, or possibly even both, but I wrote it. And as opposed to ones that I wrote before, I feel really confident in this one. Yeah, it was, it's one of, your, one of his newest, so it's, he's been getting better and better. Just like Inspector Dreyfus in the old Pink Panther movies... Every day and every way, I'm getting better and better. <laughs> you remember those, right? We watched those. We watched them once. I vaguely remember them. There was a lot of sexist stuff in it. Well, yeah, I mean, old comedy. Anyway, Cold and Distant Stars. Um, I wrote this one. <laughs> you don't even remember <laughs> It says copyright 2019, and yeah, I, um... You must have printed it then, because you weren't writing it in 2019, because we were moving all year 2019, like, looking for a house. I finished it up after we moved in, I think, because in January or so, maybe December, there I go with my old man way of storytelling. I'm <laughs> sorry, it sucks. <laughs> But anyway, shortly after we moved into the new house, I got this in the mail. Okay. All right. So I feel like it was one that you had been writing on for a while, and then you had to stop. Probably. For a bit. buying a house is fucking stressful. It really is. It's worth it, but man, oh, it's hard. Went from never playing video games to playing the Mass Effect trilogy like eight times in one year, so. There's that. It's great. But we're not here to talk about how awesome Mass Effect is. We're here to talk about how awesome... Cold and Distant Stars is. It's almost as awesome. So I guess, you know, some stories I remember where I came up with the idea. This one, I think I just got that sort of idea of when we go out and we just look up at the stars and mm. sometimes it's been a shitty day and you're just looking up at the stars going, man, I wish Star Trek was real because, you know, fuck this planet and all the people on it. Except for you guys. <laughs> Yeah, and awesome. So I sort of came up with this idea of a character from that sentiment of just kind of hopelessly staring up at the stars, wishing you could get up there and you can't. The basic premise is that after first contact with aliens, um, humanity, as humanity does, humanity had made just a fucking mess of Earth, you know, with wars and racism and... Really bad politicians and so pollution. So basically you're describing 2020. I'm describing 2020, you know. <laughs> this was before 2020 happened, guys. He's, yeah. a, he's a prophet. 2016, 2012, yeah. 2000, all those Whatever. lovely years we hate. And um, <clears throat> so Earth gets evacuated, but I mean, 
we're Texans, we're sorry, and um, Irish and Russians and all those sort of stereotypical just die hard, this is my place and I'm not leaving, some people on earth didn't evacuate, which was stupid because they get screwed for it. And a hundred years later, one of their descendants is still on Earth. Wait, wait, wait. And did you? Yeah. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say, did you say why they were being evacuated? I forgot to say why. Yeah. Well, I mean, they were ostensibly getting evacuated because Earth was a shithole. Right. It had been basically nuked. But the galaxy, the ruling body of the galaxy, also wanted to build a prison on Earth, turn the whole planet into a prison because it happens to be um, an intergalactic territory. No one major government can lay claim to Earth. So they all they claim, and they send their worst and scummiest and most terrible people there to Earth. And that's where our uh, protagonist, Samantha Kane, is born 100 years after evacuation. She's never known anything except living on Earth. Planet prison. I think that's an Alex Jones thing. I don't know. Oh, dear. No. Hey, no. turn the friggin' frogs gay. No, we do not reference that name in this house. I just really wanted to make a... Friggin' frogs gay joke. I know. <laughs> so anyway, Samantha's there. It's all she's ever known. She hates it. She hates her dead grandfather. She hates her pa dead parents. There's a lot of dead people. Because you don't, you don't survive when you're a human on Earth. She's not the only one. Um, there are a few. All right, picking things back up because we are interrupted by children. Who should be asleep by now. It's late. There are a few other humans on Earth. Samantha's not the only generational inmate. She's not the only descendant of people too stupid to leave. Um, there's Aaron, a childhood friend of hers. But where Samantha wants to get the fuck off Earth, Aaron wants to take back Earth and restore it and redeem it for humanity. Um, and Samantha is just all about, I've lived here... I don't remember her age, which was She's in her 20s. Late 20s. Mm -hmm. I think I made R in early 30s, her late 20s. You'd think the author would know these things, but I've, I've written an entire novel since then. Coming soon. Is good. <coughs> so anyway, Samantha just wants to get off Earth, and she's sort of been working towards this goal her entire life, and where the story starts, she's starting her plan in earnest. So she's worked her way, she's had this idea, and now she has everything kind of together so that she can then gather resources to get off. Yes. Get off Earth. She can't get off Earth by herself. She can't even get off Earth with just the help of Aaron. She can't even get off Earth with the help of her other best friend, who is a character I'm really proud of. Um, he's a grizzly bear. He's an intelligent, giant fucking grizzly bear named Roosevelt. You can go look up the historical reference if need be. <laughs> Um, basically, one of the inmates of Earth long ago did some genetic tweaking and raised this beast to sentience, and now Roosevelt is a giant, talking, ill-tempered, very impatient grizzly bear. Who is also stuck on this prison planet yes. against his, like, why? Yes. Why am I here? <laughs> the poor bear. I have a soft spot for that bear. He's a good bear. Nope, I can't say that. Spoilers. I say that all the time, don't I? Spoilers! 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 Anyway, <laughs> so what Samantha has to do, Earth is divided into all these different sections. Um, basic, think of it as wings of the prison. Hmm. Um, territorial differences, because um, after all, there's a bunch of different aliens. Maybe some of them need hotter, drier climates. Maybe mm -hmm. some of them need wet, humid climates. So Earth is divided into all these sectors. And over each sector is a deputy. Oh, I thought you called them wardens. What? No, no, no. I was getting to that. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Yeah, and over all of the deputies, over all of the regional command centers of these sectors, there is the warden. Right. No sorry. one knows who or what the warden is. They just know the warden runs shit from the moon, Luna Command Center. Mm -hmm. So Samantha starts working to call in favors and do deals with the various people in these different sectors because she has to put together a team. As so many great stories do, you got to have a team to pull right. off your heist, yeah. your escape, your whatever. Um, a couple of the characters, 
well, we'll discuss the best one and the most important one. You got to do a deal with the devil. And the devil in this case is Zavanar the Devout. Oh, right. He is the holy leader of an extremist, violent religious cult in space that basically believes you're either us and you swear allegiance to our faith and our God, or we purge your kind from the skies. He is he's, also he's on Earth <laughs> because he lost the war. The faith of the purging fire lost the war. But, you know, when you've still got all those militant forces out there, you've got to tread softly as you try and uh, bring war to an end. So part of the treaty was he's imprisoned on Earth instead of executed. And uh, he wants off Earth, too. For bad reasons. I don't know, this is weird talking about my own book. <laughs> we'll get used to it. You have a lot more coming. I do. Coffee? No, oh, feet. What? Watch your feet. No, I don't want to watch my feet. They're hideous, even in my awesome mustache slippers. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's good. Yeah. On. So I guess the book kind of falls into segments surrounding... Who has what I need or can use in this sector? And of course, it's prison. It's mm -hmm. a planet prison. You don't just make friends. You cut deals. You can't exchange cigarettes for um, prison wine. So what do you do? Someone needs an assassination. Someone needs revenge. Someone needs help uh, rescuing another prisoner. Those sorts of things. So these are the situations Samantha is putting herself into all in the hopes of building the resources and the people she needs to find a way off Earth. That's pretty much the story. Um, I don't know, you've read... Honey, you have read this. <laughs> what should we talk about regarding it? I mean, what stood out to you? What favorite characters? Well, definitely not Samantha. I actually did not like your protagonist because... Ah, yes. I mean, you wrote her very well. She's not nice. And she's very... She's so focused on her own goals that she tramples anybody who gets in her way. She is a hard woman raised on a hard world. Right. So, I mean, it's, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I'm just saying, as the protagonist, I didn't really like her. Um, I think Aaron, because, yeah. bless his heart, he's, he was born in a terrible circumstances, but he is doing his darndest to make good of a situation that he can't do much with. He's the optimist. <laughs> She's gonna hate the sequel. Do you ruin him? No. <laughs> yes, there is a sequel. I, I, I don't write for sequels. Right. I write a complete novel and then I move on. But then I had this idea, and now we are getting into spoilers because it immediately references the end of the book. Mm -hmm. You've gotten off Earth. You've been going for this your whole life. You're free. You're in space. The galaxy is at your fingertips. No. What on Earth would ever make you want to go back to Earth? What could do that? I think another thing that I really liked about this particular book was your ability to make Earth... <laughs> Obviously, a, an unpleasant... It's a prison, right? But there's still semblances of Earth. There's, you know, you have the Arctic or the Antarctic, the cold places, you have the desert places, you have the bog places. And so you still recognize, I'm on Earth, but it's also unrecognizable just because of the destruction that has occurred there. And I also just really liked how you divided it up and used that to your advantage in regards to um, creativity and Thank storytelling you. and stuff like that. Thank you. You're welcome. It was fun. I did have a lot of fun trying to think up different locales. Like, um, to get nerdy for a minute, um, everyone likes to talk about how Star Wars there are all these different planets that mm, um, are mm -hmm. visited in the original trilogy, which is the only trilogy worth talking oh, about. Babe, and I'm not even not, a Star Wars we're fan. We're not Star but... Wars people. Don't, don't get into that. 
I got into it. Deal with it. <laughs> but, you know, you've got your ice planet, you've got your desert planet, you've got your tr- planet of giant trees and stupid talking teddy bears. You've got all those immediately recognizable locales. Right. I kind of wanted to do that with this. Just immediate, recognizable, and I always think in terms of a screen, even though it's probably never going to happen. But just That would be cool, though, if we could be turned yeah. into a movie. Just, you know, wouldn't it look fucking cool, that whole view spreading yeah. out in front of you. Maybe you'll be a movie director someday with your little beanie. I know. I'll, I'll be walking around on set in my little purple beanie just going you know, all... Can, can, can you zoom in more? I, I need to see more perspiration. <laughs> I don't know why I would need to see more perspiration. No. We should talk about the cover. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, I've made a few covers in my time, and I'm really proud of this one. Uh, I use the combination of depositphotos.com, where for, and I'm not getting paid for this, no, um, what do you call it? Affiliations. No We're, affiliations. We have, <laughs> affiliations this is like not even a thing for us. <laughs> no, 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 this is just, they Sammy. make a, Sammy's the cat. Shut up, cat. No, but he was making a face <gasps> like he froze or something, I don't. Don't hate on my book, Sammy. You don't have any taste. You're a cat. You don't know a good story from About a shoe being thrown at you. <laughs> <laughs> Which we don't do because that's cruelty to animals. But we threaten it. Anyway, Deposit Photo. It's a great website. It's just got millions of photos that you can search through by category, by color we, scheme. We will link it below in case you're looking for a place. And it's, you know, it's like... Uh, $20 for 10 images that you can download royalty free or whatever. Um, but it's great. So I found, I was trying to find a picture that just sort of encapsulates earth, but isn't immediately recognizable as, oh, it's there's, the globe. well, more, you know, North America. I didn't right. want it to be North America. Isn't that funny how globes are so often like North America centric? Like what's with America. that? Yeah. Things are so possessed, self-possessed. <laughs> but I didn't just want it to be that, and it, it had to have the right view to it. Yeah. I wanted it to look cold and isolated. And distant. And blue, and look at that. That's beautiful. Mm. That is beautiful. I should link the cover image or something. And then, you know, access to great fonts. You mm-hmm. whip it up in Adobe Illustrator. And Amazon, Kindle Direct Publishing, also does a great job of uh, easily allowing you to put the blurb on the back. So you have done Lulu yeah. publishing, self-publishing, and now you're on to Amazon. Can yeah. you, do you want to talk about the differences for any of those self-publishers out there? I feel like Lulu was really 2000s. Mm. Yeah, I, I don't think it's scaled up well. I, it's got a terrible user interface. interface. You, can't, yeah. you can't organize your books however you want, and if you do a paperback and a hardback and a ebook, they all show up as separate entries. Whereas, you know, when oh. you go to Amazon, wow. you pull up your book and you're like, ooh, it's a mass market paperback, but I really want it in hardback, and you just toggle it, and right. there it is. Yeah. That was one of my driving, I need this. Mm-hmm. And also, so few people want to go Put a credit oh, yeah. card into Lulu. You know yeah. what the what the hell's Lulu? Right. Where is everyone Amazon? knows Amazon. Uh, you, good or bad, everyone does know Amazon. I mean, I don't know that I'd want to work there, but damn good service. How else am I going to get my three hundred pounds of cat litter in two days? What? Well, I mean, I don't do that, <laughs> but people do that. I you know, know they're next day service yeah. for stuff they don't need next day. Twenty twenty. Okay. I think that's good. Is that it? Yeah. I think that's it. Do you want to say any parting words? Uh, no, we're not done yet. Favorite scene or favorite location, action bit, confrontation? Is your I'm brain all terrible. Lady Strange like mine is? Yeah, I'm a terrible editor because now I don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> I have to read it again. <laughs> I'd say tooting my own horn, which, again, weird. I really liked finally writing where the truth of the warden comes out. Oh. That was fun. 
because I'd had that idea for a long time, but it, it comes into play quite late. Um, but yeah, I mean, we've got giant leech aliens that are super creepy. We've got bone beetles. We've got religious zealots, which that's not a thing ever. <clears throat> <clears throat> not in this country. Certainly not. Um, we've got betrayal and friendship and restoration and giant talking fucking grizzly bears, baby. Oh, yeah. And that's what we go out on. Thank you for joining us. Please Thank like you. this video if you liked it. If you didn't, then don't. Yeah, um, don't tell us. Break it to us gently. I put a year into that book. It's <laughs> my baby. You don't insult a man's baby to his face. You don't even do it on the internet. Um, babe, the internet is a wild and terrible place. All Take it back. <laughs> Take it back. You should knew of all people should know. <laughs> Not sure how I feel about that. No, actually, I don't either. <laughs> Never mind. I don't know what I meant. Take it back. Be nice. Be nice and love it. Anyway, thank you for watching. And thank you for reading, maybe. We'll have all the links below. And we will see you next time on Honey, You Should Read This. Bye. Bye. Alright, I am recording. Okay, then. Hang on, I gotta come sit down. I know. Oh. Professor is simply prepping oh. for class as the late students trickle in. I'm not late. <laughs> I'm just adjusting things. I hope that wasn't too loud on the mic. It probably was very loud. Well, I had to sniff. A man has to sniff. A man has to sniff. A man snort. has no name, but a man must sniff. What? It's a Game of Thrones reference. Really? Well, I mean the first half, not the sniffing part. <laughs> I was gonna say. That's a weird... But we do know who's reference. all about sniffing. Black Rider. Yes. Looking for those hobbits in the ring. The hobbits. Hobbits, the hobbits, the hobbits, the hobbits. Oh, to eyes and coffee. <laughs>